Our way is to gather for the love of Allah and His Prophet That's it. Our way is to gather together for the love of Allah and His Prophet to praise and honor our Lord. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our intentions solely for that, sincerely for that, not for anything. We were just speaking earlier. You never know how many people turn up <laughs> sometimes. MashaAllah, <laughs> Sheikh Sami brought food for 50 people today. <laughs> but <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> so everybody has to take some home, inshallah. <laughs> But that's that's this is the uh, the nature of this uh, of these gatherings. And, and I was telling uh, our brother also Sami. I said, Molana, um, sometimes <clears throat> sometimes we complain about our own predicament in life, where we are, what we don't have, what we have. Why people treat us like this? Why people don't treat us like that? But really, uh, the uh, main uh, character in our life story is ourselves. So uh, the way things happen is because we have to look no further than our own, our own uh, being. Why this happens to me? Awliya Allah and people of spirituality always think they don't blame others. Sheikh Nazim, one of the first books I read for him, he used to say, if somebody comes and gives you a thousand dollars, you see it from who? From that person. You kiss his hand. You thank him. You want. people are so you know. Somebody gives you something, you you're indebted to him. You show so much gratitude. But then, if that same person comes and slaps you, how would you feel? And where do you see this coming from? The money that is coming, is this the person, is he the giver or is he means of giving? And the pain or punishment that is coming our way, is it dispensed through that person by, by himself or by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And Sayyidina Ali, maybe you mentioned this story before Karamallah Waja. He used to say one one of his companions, one of his murids, one of his uh, students, said to to him, "Say, oh, am I from the people of dunya or the people of akhirah? Which ones am I from?" And Sayyidina Ali said to him, "It's very simple to find out. Which people are you from?" He said, if two people come now, one builds your dunya and gives you wealth to build your business, your house, your whatever it is. And another person comes and asks from you to give him your wealth, to give him some wealth. Building your akhirah. Because if you give in charity, you are building your akhirah. You're not building your dunya. Which one will make you happier? We all can answer this question nowadays very simply and easily. (laughs) Which one makes us happier? The one who is building our Akhirah? Or the one who is building our Dunya? May Allah forgive us. So he said it's very simple to find out which people are you from. If the one who is building your Dunya makes you happier, then you are from the people of dunya, love of dunya. If the one who is building your akhirah makes you happier, happier, then you are from the people of akhirah, that, that are building their akhirah. So we are end of times people. We are masakin. I'm reminding myself, this when we speak, uh, our teachers told us that this, this is first and foremost is for our own tazkiyah is not because we have accomplished something or we have attained uh, 
purification and we are now lecturing people. No, it's not like that. We are in need, all of us in this world. We complain, we, we, we forget who is the giver, we, we are entangled in our attachments to materialism and our comforts and so forth. And and you know we still call ourselves spiritual people. May Allah forgive us. Our only uh, our only hope is what we said, tariqatuna suhba, wal khairu fil jamiya. Is that we are sitting with the permission of a man of Allah, of a wali Allah. We are sitting here. We're connecting our hearts. And we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that nisbah, for that connection, to forgive us, to purify us, to grant us husn al-khatima. That's it. No more, no less. And we are in Mawlid Nabi month. And uh, I'd like to remind ourselves about the perfection of Sayyidina Muhammad and uh, this aspect, Kamal Zuhdihi, the perfection of his asceticism in dunya, in his, in his knowing what is what is important. Uh, he even not only is he zahid zahid in the material world, not he's an ascetic, he doesn't care about it. He's also zahid in akhirah, because we know when he went to Qabah Qawsayni Awatna, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says about him, Ma zaga al wasar wa ma taqa that when, even when he went through this, the seven heavens to Sidrat al-Muntaha, to Qaba Qawsayni wa Adna, that Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamu Alayhi, his eyesight and his heart were never wavering from his Lord. Didn't see. Wasn't looking. With all the magnificence of the sights of the angelic realm and the Malakut, and the Jabarut and whatever worlds he's been through, his attention and his, his full hudur and presence was, was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he is, has kamal al-zuhd, not only this, this dunya faniya, but he's seeking nothing but his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, he, is, he is witnessing nothing but his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we speak about his dunya zuhd. Kana sallallahu alayhi wa sallam azhadu nas and in hadith he said, قيل له ألا نبسط تحتك أليانا من when when uh, اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد when they saw him sleeping on حصير on a straw mat they said to him should we not get you something a little bit more comfortable and he said مالي وللدنيا إنما مثلي ومثل الدنيا كمثل راكب سار مثل راكب سار في في يوم صائف فقال تحت شجرة ثم راح وتركها. and he says what's what's with what's to what's this dunya to me he said he said you're asking me and look this is nothing just to put a, a mat for him so his instead of straw and he was saying. Even that, he's saying, is not of no importance to me. Uh, for us, for us uh, we are now, you, you go and uh, Allah knows what kind of beds, uh, th with what kinds of, uh, and we're not satisfied. And we say, why we're not waking up for Fajr? And when uh, Sayyidah Hafsa, not Sayyidah Hafsa, Allahumma salli, yeah, Sayyidah Hafsa, Umm al-Mu'mineen, radiyallahu anhu wa ardaha, one day Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he woke up, and he uh, he said, uh, "What have you done to?" Me? Because he didn't wake up as he usually wakes up. And he asked, "What have you done with my uh, sleeping uh, cloth, sleeping mat?" That she said, "Well, tonight we we doubled it. Usually <laughs> flat, so they yeah. <laughs> they folded it, so it's more comfortable." So Salawatu Rabbi wa Salam alayhi. He said. He said, "Return it to the way it it was because it's disturbing my 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 waking up for prayer. And now we live in a bed. The bed hugs you. <laughs> the bed itself is, hugs you. You don't want to get up for anything, you know. But this is the this is the type of how far we are from 
from Kamal, uh, the perfection of Sayyidina Muhammad's way. And وَكَانَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ يَقْنَعْ بِالْيَسِيرِ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا He used to he used to be happy whatever he gets he used to give and whatever little he had he was satisfied he was content and he used to pray that his family اللهم اجعل رزق آل محمد قوتا used to say and oh Allah make the the sustenance the provision of the آل of Sayyidina Muhammad his, his, his family قوتا is just enough not to give them more so that the dunya sucks them into you know, just enough they're satisfied Who oh. and Prophet Sallallahu he would not keep anything in his in his house he would not save for himself he would not keep and if he if he saved something it is for his own wives and just enough for them to provision وَمَا شَبِعَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَأَهْلُ ثَلَاثَةَ أَيَّامٍ تِبَاعًا He صلى الله عليه وسلم never filled his belly three days in a row. ما شبع not from meat or, uh, or kebabs or no. من خبز from bread. He never filled his tummy from bread. And what bread? That, that uh, bread that you, they used to have uh, they grind it on the stone, uh, not uh, refined stuff. But he never filled his tummy from min hintatin from barley, bread made from barley, until he left this world. So he never had three days in a row where he had enough bread to eat. One of those days, he's not going to have bread to eat. Or two of those days. And this is Sayyidah Aish. وَكَانَ يَمُرُّ بِهِ الشَّهْرُ وَالشَّهْرَانِ وَمَا يُقَدُ فِي بَيْتِهِنَا One month, sometimes two months, no fire would be burned in his house. Means no cooking. What were they eating? Water, dates, dry bread. That's it. This is Salawat Rabbi. This is who? This is Sayyidu Al-Khalq. This is, the, this is the, the master of all created beings. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who, what Sayyid Aisha says, he never ate two types of food in one day. From two kinds of food. If he was, if he ate uh, dry bread, he didn't, he didn't eat dates. And he ate dates, he didn't eat dry bread. Like this. And uh, it reminds us of also his, his, his perfect students, Sayyidina Umar, one time they brought him to, um, his wife brought him to, radiallahu anhu arda, it's dry bread and oil and uh, vinegar. And he says, what is this extravagance? Two dips for, for <laughs> oil and vinegar. This is, this is the type of people they were. Salawatu. And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah grant us subhanahu wa ta'ala to be, to understand the reality of this world and its, its, temporary, its temporary existence, our temporary existence in this world and to learn that we are like travelers that have rested under a tree as Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu informed us. And they have to continue the journey. That's the world we are in. May Allah forgive us, Ya Rabbi Tawbah, if we are complaining for anything. You are, you are, for all the, the khair, all the favors we are swimming in, if we still find things to complain about, Ya Rabbi, take away that complaint. Wa min Allahi tawfiq bi hurmatil habib, bi hurmatil fatiha.